So, Namaskar everyone. When I agreed to uh, give the inaugural address, um, I had assumed that uh, there would be Sri Vinayak Lohani, who was, and I was already nervous at that time, given the kind of sacrifice that he had made in his life. But kind of I told myself that, well, he is probably the classmate of my brother at IIT Kharagpur. I can strike a rapo and I can manage to give a speech to this audience. There will be a lot of young B.Tech students and I have been a prof here for 12 years and I said, okay, fine. And then um, I landed up here. I, I had written a short essay that I want to speak about. It takes approximately three minutes. Speaking for 10 minutes is beyond me and that's why I am trying all this stuff now. And, um, and then I came here and I saw very senior monks from the Ramakrishna mission and then I see professors Balaji and then I see professor Kalmakar, Karmalkar, then the dean of students and now my hands are shivering, my pulse is racing and I have to manage for three minutes right? So to hold your attention. And I had also assumed that there are lots of uh, undergraduate students here and I suddenly see that uh, there are undergraduate students from the past and there are very few undergraduate students here. But I will still manage to um, communicate this intense emotional rant that took me about half an hour to write, um, given the title of this um, evening's uh, uh, topic, which is Service as a Way of Life. And um, I really look forward to the uh, speech that is to be delivered by uh, Sri Vinayak Lohani. And I have asked myself, what is service and um, what are the prerequisites for service? And um, some thoughts that come to my mind are that um, the end result of an act of service is a feeling of relief for another fellow being, an increase in dignity and the decreasing suffering of a fellow being. Of course, these acts ideally should not adversely affect another person this of course is debatable because we all know the story of Robin Hood who stole from the rich and gave it to the poor. Leaving that aside, in an ideal world, if all of us engage and indulge in service, then our life and the world that we live in could probably be called utopia. As scientists and engineers, budding scientists and budding engineers and thinkers and philosophers of the humanities, what kind of service should we contemplate? And this is what this short um, essay of mine is about. And, um, and it is a bit intense and there is a lot of finger pointing, but I hope it does not, it does not hurt anyone. The list of services that one or each one of us could indulge in is endless and it's un unenviably endless. And uh, most of the thoughts that I have are relevant by and large to India. And uh, in my opinion, the root of all these um, thoughts is that we are at a, our society faces an identity crisis. Right? And from a joint family setting about three generations back, we are now a country of atomic families. And if you look at the aspirations of an atomic family, what we see is that a family of three to four, we have a washing machine a refrigerator, a mixer grinder, a gas connection with two cylinders, a minimum of 10 electronic devices. I kind of went around my house counting. There are a minimum of 10 electronic devices for entertainment and communication, at least one motorized vehicle. This is the baseline quality of life for most of us here. And when we move away from our homes to academic institutions like IITs, we assume that these will be provided for us. We aspire for these in our lives. We need air-conditioned facilities like in this room to have intellectual thoughts. We need clean toilets, rather we want clean toilets, we want traffic-free roads, we want a hassle-free life and all these we want. Then in front of whose house do we build our factories? Where would the effluents go? Where would the exhaust go? Maybe we can ship it all off to a poor country that can reclaim some useful stuff from all the things that we refuse after using them. Is there a global Kabadiwala? Is there a global Kupai Karan? I don't know, I can't translate it in other languages. Somebody who takes away or recycles a lot of waste. Is there some third world country which is poor enough to recycle the waste that we generate? Like India? I'm sorry, we are India. This is a thought. 
Then there is the other side that I face every day. There are people who clean our toilets, who sweep our streets, they guard our gardens. Many of them come from a part of this country, I will just name one, Assam. And why do they come here? They come here because of the exchange rate, which means less money for more labor in Chennai means more money in Assam. To get an identity card for these people who come from far away in this city is extremely hard. That's a society that we live in. And if you don't believe me, please ask the security cards that you see on this campus. Then this morning I look around and I see that there is this lady who collects the garbage from my house and from all our houses every morning. She walks up two stories in 50 quarters, in 50 buildings and she is probably about 50 years old and she limps all the way to a tricycle and takes the garbage that we generate. And here I have a low technology solution to all of us here and I assume they would be students. I apologize to, for this advice to all the seniors here. Please go down two floors instead of a poor lady walking up two floors in 50 buildings. If you can't, if you're old, please send your eight-year-old child to do this. And if you're an undergraduate student, please take it down. Okay. The child learns an unteachable lesson from the smell of rotting garbage, the value of effort and humility. Mahatma Gandhi cleaned his toilets. I was a warden of a hostel here. I also studied in a similar institution, lived in similar hostels. Our students dirty the toilets and leave them dirty. They blamed the monkeys for the dirty clothes that hung from their corridors. And on hostel nights, they generated so much garbage. It was because of their generosity, they said. What kind of generosity? They paid the cleaners 500 rupees the next morning to clean up all the garbage that they generated the previous night. Like I said, the list is endless. And it's an endless business of finger pointing. So where do we start? Can we not start being useful? Can we not start being of service? What is the prerequisite? How was Bapu able to clean his toilet? It's simply because he did not ignore his deed. Right? Of course, the deed was going to the toilet. He did not, he owned up. It was his responsibility. But then others used the toilet too. Right? That's why he was different. That's why he was a Mahatma. He was ready to stand up for other people's deeds too. And he was selfless. Right? He could share his toilet Yes, definitely, this is a question that many people ask, that can I share something so personal? Yes, you can. Right? Privacy is not so important. He probably gave everybody the privacy that they deserved, so it was very easy for him to share something that we probably deem very private and personal. I can go on and on. I can become unpopular, like I have done in the past. Right? I stop with, have a heart, be selfless, take responsibility, share. Then, I believe there will be peace and quiet, and life. Thank you very much for listening to me.